Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first ever Bizarre Junkies call-in show. I'm actually really excited about this. Uh, I've been talking about this for some time now. Uh, I know we got George on the back end. George, I'm really grateful to have you here today. I'm grateful I'm here too, bro. This show's got a lot of moving pieces. A lot of moving pieces. That's why I'm glad we got George because uh, George is the man. Okay? With the plan. With the plan. I mean, George, we've been talking about this show, I want to say, since like summer last year. Since we started watching Art Bell clips on yes. the reaction show. Yes, the Art Bell clips, which uh, rest in peace to Art Bell. Um, I think he died not too long ago, only like a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. but he lived right, pretty yeah. close. He lived in Pahrump. That was pretty. Th- that's where I would want you to live. If you were like a, a UFO person you're like oh, I, I i hear all these crazy i'd want you to live in prom but without further ado we have an amazing guest with us here to launch it we have noah from the black cauldron a a i would say more than a friend of the show at this point i know i live here uh, d- yeah part-time. which is fine we we enjoy having you so um but all right so uh just to get a little bit into it um first of all how have you been well we haven't had you on in a a little a few, bit. In a little bit. Yeah, but since we, November. You and I talk, I think, almost every day. Yeah, no, we're, we're definitely BFFs. Yeah. Sorry, George. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> but I've been super busy. Like, my content, my YouTube page has taken... Blown up. ...off. Thank you to my YouTube subscribers. Y'all love me down, and I appreciate y'all. Truly. Yeah, I don't even I don't even think that's that's enough to cover it, really. <laughs> like, no. Like, it's, it's been awesome to see how you've blown up in the past... Since I think you started your YouTube in what, October? Yes. <laughs> Tremendous. Amazing. Yep, yep. Amazing. So um, we're going to go ahead and let people continue to file in. Um, but so what is the point of this show? We are going to let you, the audience, lead the show today. So think of Art Bell. Think of Coast to Coast AM. Think of your normal radio call-in show. That's that's this. Yep. That is this. So there's a number on the screen. It is a little bit long because it is a Zoom call. Um, so you're going to call that first number and then it's going to ask you for that extension. So maybe write it down Mm -hmm. and then when it prompts you, you'll be able to call in and then George will be able to allow people in and, uh, we'll be able to hear your stories now. However, there are some caveats. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are some rules. One, let's, let's not abuse it. Okay. Let's not be overly vulgar. I mean, we're adults here. I'm not going to censor anybody, but like, you're calling in to say heinous shit. Like, (laughs) come on, come on now. Like, let's not do that. Um, Mm -hmm. Also, we do have the right to cut anybody for any reason. Um, granted, we're not in. The, we're not, we want you to be on the show. We're not trying to cut people. But if it comes to it, like if you're being crazy, George it wields a mighty band hammer over there. Okay. They call mm-hmm. me the executioner, people. Yes. <laughs> he hasn't. Yes. He hasn't done any executing in a while, so he's, he's itching for it a little bit. So don't don't yeah. even try it. Um, ideally, what we want to hear about is your crazy paranormal stories. You know, your Mothman mm-hmm. stories. Your, but did you did you ever encounter Mothman? Let us know. Right. Did you ever encounter Bigfoot? Let us know. Um, it sounds like, at least with your audience, we're going to get a lot of uh, yeah. fucking around and Man, finding out. Man, listen, y'all better call in. As many emails as I get from YouTube, YouTube alone, I the comments, I read you guys' comments. It's just hundreds, sometimes thousands of them. So I'm really excited to see what we have today with the calls because you guys... Some of them comments I can't read at night. Like, I still get freaked out. I'm human. Okay? <laughs> so I know my people got something for us, at least, because y'all be y'all have the tea. The tea is hot most times in my comments. So we do it, have a caller. Oh, we already have a caller. Okay, all right. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and admit this first caller. I'm admitting them. They need to unmute themselves. How do they do that, George? I they believe they press pound six or star six. Correct. All right, here we are. Caller. Hello. Hi, um, my name, well, can I be anonymous or? Yeah, yeah. you don't have to give us your name if you don't want to. Okay, so um, first let me like precursor this uh, message by saying I don't believe that anything at all is random. I think that everything happens for like a reason, as strange as, a, as, as the reason may be. So, um, first off, I have never, today is the first time I've ever seen y'all's content. Um, by the way, I'm already a fan. I'm already a fan. Like it's really cool, cool content. Um, and I just wanted to say that today, today, exactly today, um, this is like, kind of like 
and intent. I missed the rules. Could you reiterate the rules? Me? Uh, I mean, I mean, just don't be, don't be saying anything crazy. Like, you know, you know, any racism or anything okay, like cool. that, but you know, right, let's nice. try to keep it like a five minute oh, story. We'll, okay, we'll give sweet. you your time. Okay, sweet. All right. So basically a year ago today, I overdosed. Um, okay. I took, uh, I took, a you know, a fake, uh, perk and it turned out to be fentanyl. Okay. Oh, no. So yeah terrible bad anyways it has a happy ending though and it's super paranormal so basically um just like a night like tonight i um the job i do is pretty like physical so um i you know i've been in car accidents with traumatic brain injury and all that and um i actually have been like a diagnosis of a traumatic brain injury from getting hit by a little a literal 18 wheeler so anyways, um, so yeah, a year ago I overdosed. I got in, it was a night just like tonight. I went to go pick up my mental health meds at Walmart and it was like this time of night and I took the, took the pill and the, and literally looked at the backup camera in my little car and that's it. That's all I remember. After that, I was somewhere and like literally, um, my mom died when I was 17. And since I have a brain injury, I don't remember a lot of things, like a lot of things. I don't remember what she smelled like, what her hand felt like, what her voice sounded like because it's a brain injury. Literally, there's parts of my memory I don't remember at all. And um, also being a drug user didn't help that at all. So basically, all of a sudden, I was at this place and I was like, and I'm not like a, I'm not a spiritual person. Like I'm actually like Jewish, but, um, I've been in the Catholic church, the Baptist church, and I'm just kind of like trying to figure out like what I believe in and stuff like that. But anyways, so the last thing I remember is looking at a backup camera and then basically it was like, it was like the only thing I could compare it to is like when you walk outside on a summer day and your eyes all of a sudden adjust to this light that's like blinding and and all of a sudden i'm just in this whiteness like it's just white literally everywhere and um by the way this is the first time i've ever shared this story like i've shared it with my husband but that's it because i still am trying to like understand what happened so anyways so basically I'm in this white place and I'm just like looking around and I'm like, I haven't, it has not occurred to me at all what has happened at all. Like no even thought of that is on my mind. And then I see my mom and I knew it was my mom instantly because I'm like, bro, I'd seen her with my mom for 10 years and dreams and shit. And she would never talk. She would just always be there, but she would never come close to me and she would never talk. Right. And so and my mom died real sudden, like in a car accident. So I didn't like have time to prepare or anything. So one day I literally saw her and then one day I, and then she was gone <laughs> the next day. So anyways, so she's there and I'm like, oh, elated. Like all of a sudden, like my heart is like about to explode and I run to her. Cause I'm like, at this point, it's like being in a dream, but also being in reality. I don't know how to explain it, but I run to her, I hug her and I feel her. And I smell her. And dude, when I tell you I literally smelled her, like, bro, my shit. I mean, my, my, my mom's stuff has been gone for like 10 years out of my dad's house. Like, I don't have nothing of my mom's at all. I mean, I might have a letter in a, in a drawer somewhere, you know? And so anyways, I smell her and I hug her and she, she kind of pushes me back. And I'm, I, I, all of a sudden it's like, I sense it without her even saying anything, like there's something up, like something's wrong. And then I realized like, where the fuck am I? Like, where am I? Excuse me. Where am I? Like, where is this place that I'm at? And then I realized that I'm, I'm dead. I died. I was dead. I was wow, going to heaven. And so, quick. <laughs> so basically I'm like, yo, am I dying? Am I dead? Mom, am I dead? Mom. I'm like shaking her at this point. Like, am I dead? At this point, I can feel her hair. I can feel she's just looking at me and, you know, she just looks at me and she's like, Ray, you're fucking up. And that's all she said. And I'm like, and I'm just like, everything she needed to say was in those three or four words. I don't know what it is, but anyways. And so I'm like, 
I just take a deep breath and then I'm like, so I'm dead. Right. And I'm like, just questioning, questioning. And then all of a sudden I stand up and it's like, I look down at my hands and my hands start to disappear. It's so crazy, man. This is like the weirdest thing that's ever happened in my entire life. My hands like disappear. Right. And then all of a sudden it's like the sound in the background. It's like that sound you hear sometimes like, and you're like, Oh, it's a cell phone tower or something. And when it's like, beep, and then it gets real fucking loud. And it's like, Basically, all of a sudden, the white turns into, like, the white of the ambulance, right? And so I'm in this ambulance. It's fucking chaos. Like, bro, straight up chaos. Like, people are, like, there's cops. There's EMS. There's, it's just, like, the most, I'm in a Adidas track suit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even know. It's like I would drop from Grand Theft Auto if anyone, you know, that's how it felt. And, like, did the, the EMS is like, we got her, we got her, oh my god, we got her, you know? The cops like, yo, where's the drugs? Blah blah blah. It's just fucking straight up chaos, you know? And um all of a sudden I just start screaming because I'm a parent and I'm not gonna allude to anything like any information or anything, but like I'm like, where I'm so confused. I'm like, where the fuck am I at? Where's my kid at? Like, whoa, what is going on, you know? anyway the EMS dude's like you were dead like you were not breathing like my, my lung my my fucking um ribs were fractured from them doing CPR on me and everything and like literally I don't know who had the wheel like Jesus had the wheel or something I'm not even joking because I drove like tw- like like 15 miles straight up like 15 miles anyways so basically, you know, I go to jail is the worst that it's like rock bottom of my life or whatever. Anyways. And, um, I'm still shook. I, when I tell you I am shook, I am shook, man. Like it was the most surreal experience in my life. And for three days, I'm like, I didn't even tell my husband. Cause I was like, he's going to think I'm fucking crazy. Like he's going to think I'm out of here. Right. But I'm like, is this real? Did this really happen? You know what I mean? Like, did this really, I mean, I knew, I knew that I had the bruises on my thing and dude said he Narcan me four times. He was like, that was it, bro. We were not Narcan no more. And like, so this is the craziest part, man. My mom used to wear this perfume called Trey song. And if you guys don't believe me, I literally have a neurologic neurologist neuro you know anyways the brain doctor i mean i have a diagnosis for traumatic brain injury there's no way i would have remembered this but like no we believe you i remembered her perfume yeah that's that's very normal because you cannot get your shirt i get my shirt and it's the freaking perfume bro it smells like it so i'm like yo i'm tripping there's no way this is real So I'm like, okay, I live in ENC, so it's, you know, a rural part of North Carolina. And I'm like, yo, it's probably, like, um, you know, crazy. And I'm going to take this shirt that I was wearing, this Adidas sweatshirt, and take it to belt and see if the lady smells what I'm smelling, okay? Because I'm like, I need some clarity on this. Like, it's keeping me up at night. No, and I'm going to provide a little bit of clarity. So what you had was a um, near-death experience um my my sweetheart Nayambi is in the comments saying um talking about that I talked about that on TikTok you cannot get your permission or you cannot die without your ancestors permission so that doesn't surprise me thank you so much for calling in I think we have do we have other we have we have we have four more we have a lot of callers so people are very excited to uh to to join in uh do we have our next caller up George uh yes let me move that one all right, hello, caller. Where are you calling from today? And you have to unmute. Yeah, star yourself. six on your keypad. You should be able to unmute. Near death, huh? That's that's a that's crazy. a crazy one to start off with. Mm-hmm. Caller, caller, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Hi. How are you? Um, good. Good. How are you? I just- well, good. I just want to say I'm watching you guys, and I do watch the Black Colin all the time, and I love watching Thank it. You. Um, um, so basically, um, I'm going to put this in a nutshell. So I work overnight at the hotel, and so um, I stayed overnight one time, and 
I was basically was going through a lot, um, dealing with like, you know, like my mom's death and just a lot of things that I was going on with my life and stuff. So my friend, she's a very spiritual person and she um, does a uh, spiritual bath and stuff. So she said, take this, you know, like when, you know, relax in the bath and go lay down, relax. So I did just that. Now, um, when I was laying in my bed, I literally felt like somebody was shaking my arms really, really bad. And I looked over in the corner of my eye, and I could see a older lady with a really crazy face. And she looked like she was mad at me and was trying to shake me, all while holding my hand. And I'm sitting there like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And as soon as I kept saying it over and over, it was all over. But I was still, like, in my dream, and I could see myself standing over the bed. Like, and it was just gone. I don't know what that means or, you know, I I haven't had that happen to me in so long. Okay, yeah, because it sounds like you were astro projecting. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> pretty crazy. It sounds like you were yeah, an astro. Yeah, you know, I do that a lot. I do that a lot. I'm a, I'm a very spiritual person. And, um, like I, I literally like, I, I, uh, can, I, I sense energy and my mom comes to me in my dreams a lot, but it's ever since I did that cleansing, it's like, I, I don't know if I triggered something or I yeah, don't know. Normally cleansings don't necessarily do that. So I'm a little surprised, but at the same time, not surprised, not with stuff I've heard before. So, but that's crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I don't have as much experience as you do with the, the spirit baths. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, from what I've heard, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely something maybe I should start looking into, but, uh, okay. We'll go ahead and move on to our next caller. Uh, remember, in order to um, once we add you, you'll hear that we you have been asked to unmute. You press star and six on your keypad, and that will unmute you. Uh, George, I believe we have our next caller. I'll let you know once they've entered. Okay. Caller. State your name for us, if or, you would or like, location, or, or location, or just say hi. You're, but you're on the air. Hey, uh, this is Amanda Zerley. I'm from Michigan. Hi, welcome. Welcome from Las Vegas. Hi, so yeah, um, Noah, I just wanted to say hi. I love your channel. I'm so glad I found your content. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, my story is pretty tame compared to the first one we had. Um, mine was really just a feeling. Um, I had moved to Indianapolis in my early 20s, and I really didn't know anybody. I'd moved down there with a boyfriend that I met in college. And when we moved to Indianapolis, it was just kind of a really big change for me. I had come from kind of a smaller town. And so when I moved there, it was just kind of a total culture shock for me. So I was really just trying to make friends, and I had met someone in the store that I worked with. Her name was, um, I'll just call her S, so I don't have to disclose her name, but I met as she worked at like the little bank area and I worked in the flower shop and we met each other and eventually the friendship grew and she had invited my boyfriend and I out to her uh, family's house. And it was in kind of a suburb area, um, very different from the city area where we grew up in. It was very much a lot of farmhouses and um, just very country compared to the downtown of Indianapolis. And when we got there, you know, it was a family cookout, and you could tell the house was old, but they were redoing it. So the back part of the house where we were by the pool, there was this, um, you could tell everything was new. It was remodeled. And, you know, the kitchen and the bathroom, and then it went out onto a porch where there was this pool, and then they had a big backyard, and that's where everybody was hanging out. And we were outside most of the time, and I remember I had to go to the bathroom, so I just kind of wandered my way into the kitchen, and it was the new part, and I went to the bathroom, washed my hands, did what I had to do, and when I came back out, um, I was the only one in the house, and I remember kind of looking over to my right when I was heading out towards the porch, and you could tell that was like the living room and the upstairs part of the house. And you could tell that part of the house hadn't been touched. Like, that was the old part of the house. 
And I remember when I took a step into that part of the house, to my right, there was this kind of winding staircase up to the right, up, upstairs. And there was a landing first. And on that landing, there was this old kind of monochrome-looking picture from back in the day when they used to, like, paint on the mm -hmm. pictures, and they would be kind of just antique-looking. I thought it was neat. So I kind of took a step up and I to, to take a closer look. So I step up and I take a closer look. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, that's really cool. And I kind of look upstairs, and there's something on the landing up there, too, and I wanted to go check that out as well. As soon, and I'm telling you, as soon as I put my foot on that first step to go upstairs, something just, it was like a, a hand on my chest. Oh, hell it man. was an immediate stop. Mm. It was an immediate, you don't belong here. You need mm. to back up. And I remember I literally put my hands up and I just backed up. Smartly. Smartly. <laughs> I didn't turn around. I backed up all the way out through the kitchen into the porch and kind of just went and sat with everybody else at the picnic table. Mm. And we kind of got back to uh, playing cards and whatever, you know, we we're just hanging out, having drinks by the pool. And as notices, I'm kind of quiet, you know, we're always joking around and whatever. And everybody's partying she she kind of points it out you know she's like you know what's going on and i tell her later you know because i didn't want to freak anybody out at that moment so i'm like you know i'll tell you later and then later on before we're going home i tell her i'm like you know man i had the weirdest feeling going into your house earlier mm -hmm. and i told her about the feeling on my chest and the feeling of backing up and why i didn't go back into the house for the rest of the evening and she looks me straight in the eyes and she goes, you know, Amanda, this house has been in my family for over a hundred years. Mm. Um, she goes, and my entire high school, the four years of high school, she goes, me and my sister did not live at home because we would see a figure standing at the edge of our bed. Mm -mm. And mm -hmm. she said, she really thought it was because they had played with spirit boys, with spirit boards when she was younger. She thought that they had invited it in and they thought that it was family at first, but she said after a while, it didn't feel that way. And it just kind of confirmed everything <laughs> for me. Like, and I, I never went back to the house. I continue to hang out with us. She's a very good friend of mine. But she was really the one person that kind of opened me up to that side. I've never experienced anything other than that. Uh, like I said, it's pretty tame and it's pretty mild. It was just a feeling, but it was a definite. It was a definite feeling in the chest. I felt it, and I, it still gives me chills to this day when I tell people. It's just I felt threatened. I felt unwelcome, and it was a definite feeling in the chest and in the throat. And I backed up, and I never went back to that place again. <laughs> Good wow. for you. Good for you because most people would what fuck around and and find out unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm so well, glad that uh the paranormal encounters I have had as of late cuz I've had a lot, I mean, in the last. Yeah. Just in that one night I had a lot and nothing mm -hmm. was ever dark or demonic, mm -hmm. but people keep going, "When are you going to go to a uh, Goldfield Hotel?" and I'm like, "Why do you wish that on me? <laughs> why do you why do you want me to go to the most haunted places? Like I'm already scared yeah. shitless." But uh, thank you so much for your call. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next caller. That was definitely... Uh, okay. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Thank you. You, you as well. Uh, yeah, George. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next caller. Um, we have a lot of them based on... Oh. A lot of people are, are yeah, wanting to tell their up. stories. Does it give us a number or is it just, does it just say... I'll say the last four. Yeah, digits. let's say the Three, last four. Two, two, five. Three, two, two, five. You're up. Name and Hello. location if you'd like. Um, my name is Nova Han, and I'm from Philly. That's my and this cousin. is my story. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I have been rolling this story over all day. Um, it's a little background. I've worked in mental health, addictions, and psych in the second oldest hospital in Philadelphia, and we have had odd things happen. So... We had a young lady, this is back in the late 90s. Um, she was very volatile, very angry. Just, it took 
the whole team to kind of like control her or manage her. Um, her mother came by and she saw her daughter like flaming, flipping out. She said, well, can I bring the family next visit and the priest to kind of bless her? And which was unorthodox, but we were like, okay, well, it's a part of her treatment. So we're, we're going to allow it. So the next visiting day, it was about eight o'clock at night. Mom asked, well, is there a private room or someplace we can go? Because we really don't want this to happen on the floor because it's kind of a private thing. Again, unorthodox, but we granted it. Staff is there. We're watching everything. You could see when the family and the priest entered the private room that they were in, this little girl's face changed. She was like 18, 19. She went from being, it was almost like demonic, and I hate to use that word, but we all literally saw this girl's face change into something completely different when the priest entered the room. So we all kind of were like, okay, well, I guess this is happening now. The priest started to bless her, put holy water on her, you name it. This little girl almost jumped out of her skin to attack the priest. We had to jump and restrain her. You'd have thought we were fighting an animal. We had never seen anything like this. Working in psych, you see a lot of things, but you don't see things like this. It got so bad that we literally had to hold her down on the on the floor and restrain her. The priest is still blessing her. We'll put it that way. It was to the point that the lights went off, came back on. I don't get afraid. I'm not one of those people that get afraid easily, but this shook me to my core. I have never seen anything like this. This took about 45 minutes mm. just to get her stable. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, when it was finally done and over, it was like night and day. You would have swore something was pulled out of her and just kind of like released. Like as soon as the lights went out, it was kind of like this night and day type of thing. And I've I've never experienced anything like that since, but I've experienced quite a few things in my life. I've never seen anything like that. And again, this happened in the second oldest hospital, psych hospital in the city. I am a veteran of mental health. But the the thought of things being in people is very very real oh, it's very real now. that's my tiktok cousin thank you boo for calling in yes thank um, you she's thank been you. following me since i had like maybe a thousand followers on tiktok oh so an og from, so from day OG, one some of my content my early day content came from her story so i appreciate you nova for even calling in and i know she's not lying me and her have talked on the phone and i know she's not lying i mean that's a crazy story though i mean yeah it, like it sounded like it was a little one that was yeah. just possession is, right. possession is real people do not understand you will see uh, what they show you on tv as far as mental health hospitals that's that's tv it gets real mm -hmm. it gets real but have a good night and thank you thank and you, I'll talk to you soon. all right we'll go ahead and move on to the next caller uh what are the last four george it'll be four eight 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 four eight 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 you are up four eight 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 Remember, you got to press star six to unmute. Four, eight, eight. Caller, name and location if you'd like. Can you hear us? No, I think they muted again. You may have muted yourself. Hello? Okay, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. There we go. Hello. Welcome from, uh, hello, Atlanta, Georgia. Hi. <laughs> What do you got for us today? 
Um, just say I'm, I'm actually a medium, and I wanted to tell um, uh, my first experience. Okay. Okay. About being a medium. Did you did you want to hear about that or? Yeah. Yes, no. Absolutely. Please. I'm yeah. waiting. I'm like okay. <laughs> okay okay well um so um one morning um i was at my grandmother's house there was a call that came in um and everyone was kind of frantic running around the house i was um felt like a very uh, i was probably about five years old um the energy in the room to me slowed down it was paused um i automatically started seeing things in my third eye um they told my grandmother they were, wasn't going to tell her what was going on, um, but I knew because I was seeing what, what happened. At that time, we had to all go over to my grandfather's house in a truck, so all the kids had to go lay in the back. And as I was laying in the back and closed my eyes, I saw uh, my grandfather washing his car, and then I saw him collapse to the ground. So by that time, I knew that there was something going on. When we got out of the truck and got to his house, everyone was trying to um, find out where he was. They, you know, they were making up stories. The neighbor said maybe he was here, um, but I heard him tell me to go exactly where he was standing. When I went to where he was standing and he failed, it was um, his two hearing aids that was there. They asked me how did I know where he fell, and I told them that um, he told me. Uh, of course, you know, adults was like, okay, whatever. Um, later on, now I'm 38 years old, and I'm able to hear spirit, and I, I, I connect, and I help a lot of people. My ancestors came through and told me the reason why they made me find those hearing aids was because I can hear spirit, and I can also hear them. Ashe. I always kind of low-key yeah. want to be a medium, but I'm a scaredy cat. I want to see a medium. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go see one because I would love to. I have a good one ancestors. for you to see. Yeah, I would she's love been that. on the show before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely not for the um, the week. Um, definitely. And you, I, I feel that my soul has been here many times. I have mm -hmm. stories from my past life. Um, so I can't really be shaken, you know, too much, especially when it comes down to spirit, the spirit realm. Um, I can't be shaken. Um, so I can, I was actually maneuvering through the, the spirit realm when I was younger. Then I was more, you know, I was physically here, but I was always on the astral plane, always. Mm -hmm. So I mastered that plane um, before I mastered, uh, you know, the physical as a, as a child, mm -hmm. um, I was I, I can remember going down, being in my bed, being asleep, but traveling um, to my friend's house and, and seeing what they were doing. And I wake up and go down the street and tell them exactly what they were doing and um, things like that. So I mastered that realm before. Well, that's realm. awesome. That's a, a true gift and a talent because I've said it before. I'm clumsy. I let go of my cord. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for telling us your story that was uh it's definitely insightful it's it's nice to hear uh or it's interesting to hear people's first mm -hmm. real kind of encounters with the paranormal or with the other side um but we'll go ahead and move on to the next caller george who do we have up next last four numbers are four four zero zero four four zero zero press pounce or star six to unmute Pound six or star six, whatever it's telling you to do. We forgot from the beginning of the show. Yeah, star six. <laughs> there Hello. we are. <laughs> Name and location, if you'd like. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Okay, so my name is Alika, and I'm in Texas, right? And Welcome. I want to tell you, I want, God, I want to tell you, um, the first time that, well, the beginning of a series of really strange events in my life. So a little background. I don't care about the background. So my mom, she she um, used to go to like these really spiritual, let's call them spiritual churches, where they teach you to burn the candles and stuff like that and pray to the different saints and stuff, but not really Catholic, Catholic right? Okay, cool. Mm. So... I was always one that was raised that I was the dreamer. I, I, I've always, that was my gift, dreams. And so we had, we were living in this house and I always kind of, you know, I was at the age where I kind of separated myself from everybody. So I stayed in the attic. That's where I lived. And 
it was kind of like the attic. Anyway, long story short, so my mom had an altar. Okay, that's cool. She had candles. That's cool. But she had these little tea-like candles, right? And one day, and I kept telling her, like, Mom, I keep having these dreams. And she was like, well, just say the 23rd song, it'll be okay. You know, the prophets at the church was like, well, yeah, you know, um, they just want to talk to you or whatever. They just want to keep you safe or whatever. But it, I, it wasn't really feeling like that, right? So one night I had this dream, and the dream was it was this lady, and she was an old lady, and she did not feel friendly. And so my mom said, say the 23rd Psalm. I was like, I'm saying the 23rd Psalm, and I'm burning this candle in my dream. Like, Now, in my dream, I was in my house um, in the front room where my mom's altar, you know, adjacent to where my mom's altar was. And so I was like on the cocktail table. And I'm burning the candle. You know, like those little soot snakes, those little things that they do in on uh, Fourth of July. They look, mm-hmm. look like pellets when you burn. They turn. Yes. So I'm burning the candle, and the little soot snakes start coming out, and the lady is laughing, laughing, laughing. So I've always dealt with sleep paralysis and things like that. So I fought my way out of out of sleep, and I hear my mom going off. And she's like, I don't know who been messing with my altar. And whoever I find out did it, they gonna get it. <laughs> and so I go down the stairs, and as I'm looking. It's like buckets of wax from my room all the way down to the altar. The altar caught on fire, uh, but it did not burn anything but the altar. Uh, mm. So that's been like a long history of things that just manifest themselves from the spiritual into the natural world and try, try to get and grab my attention. So that's my story. That's mm, it. Wow. Thank you so much for telling your story. That was a, uh... That was a little little that, spooky oh there. Oh my god, I would have a conniption <laughs> if my altar set on fire. Oh my gosh. I don't I don't have an altar. Maybe yeah, I should have it one. So, it totally caught on fire. It didn't burn anything um but the altar. It mm-hmm. was buckets of wax mm. all over the place, all over the altar, all up against the walls, you know. And so then I went to my pastor and I was like, What's going on? She's like, Oh, you know, once again, she just wanted to keep you safe. I'm like, bro, she tried to burn the house down. What are you mm. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of gave me a different look on religion at that point, but it's it's like now it's not, you know, there are times when things kind of manifest themselves. And people are like, did you see that? I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's attached to me. <laughs> right. Tell me something that's, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, had a, I had a roommate. She, uh, she was like, I just saw this lawyer walk. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I don't need to tell you that shortly thereafter, everybody moved out because, yeah. you know, things kept popping up. So there's that. But, yeah, that's me. So Well, thank you like so much for calling in. We appreciate your story. We're going to go ahead and move yes. on to the next caller. Thank you. George, who do we have up thank next you. in the queue? The next caller that we're going to have's last four digits are 1773. 1773. Star six to unmute yourself. Thank you for all the love and support too, by the way, guys. Keep yes, liking please. the video. 1773, last four digits of your number. Unmute yourself for us. Uh-oh. Star six uh-huh. on your number pad to unmute. All righty, we're going to admit somebody else too while right. that's going on. The person that we're admitting next is last four digits, 1161. Hello? There we go. Thank Hello? you. Thank you, bro. Oh, Hello? Okay. Oh, we, we, yeah, we oh. accidentally got both of them. So we got 1161. 1161. Hello, welcome to the Bizarre Junkies call show. State your name and location if you'd like. Hi, I'm Charmaine, and I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Hey, Miss Noah. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, so I have a couple of things. I know I'm not going to hold you guys because I know there's a lot of people in the queue. But so this actually happened last night. So my mom, she lives in the complex. And, you know, when you live amongst others, you start to form relationships and whatnot. So this one lady that um, she's been in contact with very nice lady. She always bring her food and the boyfriend of the lady actually helped my mom get her car fixed and everything. So last note was like night before last. Um she called me and she said, Charmaine, um my door my she was like my my door was locked. 
my door wasn't open, but she got up out her um, bed and she looked in her living room and she seen, she said she saw a man. And I'm like, a man? She's like, yeah, I saw a man standing in my living room, but my door it was like open, was like unlocked. But she said it wasn't a man. It, she said it was her spirit. And I said, really, mom? She said, yeah. So after she told me that, she got off the phone. And the, today, Ms. Holmes, which is a lady that lives next to her, came to her and said, the lady of the boyfriend passed away. And Ms. Holmes was like, okay, well, yeah, that, that's what they say. If you see a man's spirit, that means a woman past of who, whom you was close to and vice versa. So I thought that was very interesting mm-hmm. to hear. And I wanted to see what Miss Noah thought about that as well. Like, is that true? If you see a man's spirit, that means a woman close to you died mm-hmm. and then vice versa. Is that true? I've actually never heard of that before because spirits, they be just, they don't care. They don't discriminate. Yeah. I've never heard that before, yeah. but I can see how that can kind of correlate, especially if the other person's already passed. I thought that was pretty interesting. And then my my last one um, happened to me, actually, when I was working in my hometown in a restaurant out there. So I was in the stock room. I mean, like, Virginia is is a lot. It's a very historical, like, um, county. I mean, state, state. But where I was, Caroline County, a lot of like other uh, like buildings and stuff out there, like buried on uh, Native American burial grounds. So mm-hmm. I was in the back room getting stuff to stock up at the front. And mind you, it was just me in the back room, and you know, all my coworkers was up front doing what they had to do, whatever. So I'm getting stuff off down off the shelf, and I see a. It looked like to be a man, but I couldn't really tell because it was just like a blur. And when I looked out of the corner of my eye, he kind of like walked off. So I'm like, okay, I'm on that trip and whatever. So I go up and add, at the time, the young lady, Sloan, I said, hey, Sloan, did you come to the back? She was like, no. And so I asked the other two people that was working with me, hey, did somebody just come to the back? Because the person just stood there. And I'm like, okay. Okay, mm. so I didn't think nothing of it, but after that, it kind of freaked me out. So I kind of wanted to dig more into that realm of the world. So I, fl- I know Miss Noah, you had the thing with Ouija boards, but mm-hmm. curiosity got me, and I went for and that was the Ouija board. So oh, we hold on. <laughs> it was me and the roommate. We were playing with the Ouija board, and we got in contact with the spirit, and the spirit. Supposedly was a man that had got killed. This was at the time it was in at the time I was living in Arlington, Virginia, because I was going to school out there. And the guy that got through to us, I guess, playing the Ouija board, he lived in Bethesda, Maryland. That's what he okay. said. He said, "Yeah, I got killed on on Two Street." Now, why I say this story? correlates to the incident at my job because he said he came through he said yeah i saw you and he it was to me because i was the one asking the question i was like okay so i just stopped after that but i don't know why that incident connected with whoever i was speaking to on in the ouija board but yeah that kind of after that i'm a full believer of the spiritual world you know when we pass on in life it doesn't just end Mm-hmm. Life, you know, life just goes on. So I'm, I'm a full believer, Miss Noah. I want to get a reading from you because <laughs> I've been having a lot of things going on in my life, not positively, and I feel like I have some things going on that I need to get figured out spiritually. That I, I don't believe in in God. I don't believe in none of that. But I just need some spiritual looking into from somebody that I can kind of connect to. And I feel like I connect with you, Ms. Noah. So I'm going to get that from yes. you as soon as I can. Yes. I'm going to email you or do whatever I have to do to get that done because yeah, there's a lot going on within me spiritually that I need some straightening out. Yes, ma'am. It sounds like you may have the sight a little bit because, it, I mean, yeah, one ghost sometimes is like a coincidence, but if you keep seeing them, 
that's a whole nother ball game. So yes. Yeah, I guess Contact I me. guess in this case yeah. you wouldn't go see your doctor, but you would go mm-hmm. see your spiritualist, no, I guess. Yeah. I, you would go to like a medium or a spiritualist, tarot mm. card reader, divinator, you know. Right, which I believe you have the link for down down below in your bio. Yeah, it's in my bio. So anybody yeah. interested in that, okay, you can uh, purchase that. Yes, I need something because it's like, and then at, like not every time, but every so often when I'm by myself, I don't feel scared. I just feel unnerved, and I will have to get up and turn on a light or just get somewhere that's not dark. And then after I turn on the light or get somewhere that feels better to me, it goes away. So I'm like, okay. What am I doing wrong? Is something wrong? Like, so I just need someone like like you, Miss Noah, to dive deeper within me spiritually to figure some things out. Absolutely. I've been going through it. Listen, I'm here to help. The link is in, I think, the description of this video. If you like to book a reading, yep. um, it, you'll feel so much better. Trust me. Trust me. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not going to hold you guys. Um yeah, I'm, I'm still watching. I'm going to watch y'all tell the end because I was like, yes, I finally called a lot. Yeah, so, thank you. Well, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much for connecting with me. Yes, sir. Y'all take it easy. Thank you. You as well. All right. We'll go ahead and move on to the next well, caller. We've got some, some, some crazy stories going on so far. On the that first. doesn't surprise me. I told you my commenters, they have the best tea. Like, I thought about <laughs> making a video just of their comments and just reading them. Well, we're kind of doing that at, <laughs> yeah, right now. We're right. just letting them speak it to us. All right, George, we'll go ahead and move on to the next caller. Who Our do we next have next? Next caller's last four digits are 4960. 4960. Unmute yourself. Star like right, six. <laughs> at window number 17. Oh, my goodness. I can hear that in my head. Hello, welcome Hi. to the Bizarre Thanks. Junkies call-in okay. show. Uh, state your name and location if you'd like. Yes, this is Vera, and I'm from South Carolina. Welcome. Ooh. Hi, Ms. Noah. I just Hi. love your channel. Thank you. I love your aura. I'm just going to say that. Like that. But um, I'm going to tell a quick, short story. Um, one day I was I went to the cemetery to visit my grandmother. Mm-hmm. And she's been gone for well, it'll be twenty years this year. But um one day when I was walking through the cemetery, um, I saw one of my old classmates and uh he passed away by they say it was suicide, but it wasn't. But he was playing Russian roulette and he accidentally shot himself in the head. So I wanted to take a picture of his of his of his uh gravesite because I wanted somewhat similar to how I wanted to um do my grandma's grave. So my phone was on like maybe six like fifty or sixty percent. And as soon as I took the picture, my phone automatically shut off. And drained the battery, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, it kind of, it like really freaked me out. So I got the airphone dot com out of there. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I, That's I, very I, common. I've yeah. heard of that. Spirits, even whenever we do readings, we ask spirits to take energy from the water and the crystals, not yeah. my cell phone <laughs> or me. It's, what what ha- do they like? Do they like supercharge and then they're? Um, they interfere with so much. They get the um, lithium battery. Now they're yeah, sending they my nudes out to people. It. Listen, <laughs> I pray that they're, I always, I'm like, please don't mess up my reception. It's always the Wi-Fi reception, audio, battery. That's very, very common. I never said nothing like that. That was like my first time actually ever experiencing something like that. I've heard stories about spirits, um, like either they're trying to communicate uh, through devices or anything in that nature, but the experience that I went through when I endured that, I never, the I never take my cell phone back out there with me ever mm-hmm. again. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't blame you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, that was thank you, amazing. thank you for for calling in. Hope you have a great rest of your night and weekend. They're asking about oh. in the chat. Mm-hmm. Um, how can they tell that they're in queue? Is there like a waiting music that they hear? Uh, no, I think it's just 
If, uh, if you've called, you're in the queue. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of you. It's a lot of you guys. There's yeah. currently 14 people. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So thank you all for for stacking up and staying strong in there. Um, maybe we'll we'll talk with Zoom and getting some uh, holding music. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or at least maybe the. No, I mean you're listen, They're listening to the live stream anyways. They're ready to go. Right. Last four numbers: four four zero zero four four zero zero. Hello, welcome to the Bizarre okay, Junkies okay. live call-in show. Uh, state your name and location if you would like. Okay, hi. This is Alika one more time. First of all, I didn't oh. say hi to Miss Noah, so I want to say hi to Miss Noah. I want to tell y'all one more story, and this is the story. Oh, what happened? <laughs> oh, there, oh, she, there is. she is. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you now. Okay. So, first of all, Oh, we lost her again. Okay, you might, hi. You know, so is, oh, okay. It's cutting in and out. It is because there's a delay. Oh, okay. Then we'll just let you go. Okay, in then. so is that better? Yes. Okay, that was because I was trying to look at it live. Okay, so first of all, I just came here I was, and I want to say one more thing. So hi, Miss Noah. I didn't say hi to you before. Okay, second of all, I want to tell you the story about the flies, okay? So... Oh. It was, I lived in Wisconsin at this time, right? And I had a boyfriend. We had a great apartment. We lived in the suburbs. Great. And so all of a sudden, there were flies. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about one or two flies. There was an infestation of flies in my house. And, you know, when you think flies, like, I don't know, I'm I'm pretty old. So, like, I think about um, Amityville Horror. Remember the flies? Mm -hmm. And so it was much worse than that. And so there were flies. All I lived in an apartment. I had my landlord to come and check. I'm like, is there something dead in my house? I don't smell nothing dead, but I see all these flies. And, you know, I had the proof because it was like flies all in the windowsill mm-hmm. dead. Um, he couldn't think of anything. He said it wasn't coming from anybody else in the, uh, in the apartment. They weren't complaining of flies, nothing in the hall, but I had these flies. It was so bad. There was a constant hum of flies. Oh, wow. And morning, noon, and night, it would not stop. And then one day, it just disappeared. So somebody told me once before, I think I saw it on the TikTok, that flies are like monitoring spirits. Me. And so, yeah. <laughs> it just was like me. Just like another one of those. Yeah. Movies. Huh? I said it was me. I did a whole, like, um, a couple of videos on monitoring spirits. Uh, and flies are the number one. If you have an odd fly in your house in the middle of the winter, dead of winter, they like I don't know why they like to be in the bathroom too. I feel like I see the most like monitoring spirits in bathrooms. It's weird. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're mine creepy. was all over the house. It wasn't. It was weird because it wasn't like in the kitchen. I had a, I have a I had an open floor plan at that time. So, but it was mostly in my bedroom. Mm-hmm. Like that's where they reside, and it was so weird. I'm I'm still new to your channel, so this is like day three for me for your channel. But yeah, mm-hmm. it was so bad, and to this day, I am like horribly afraid of flies and i will freak out if i start to see flies in the house because i'm just afraid that they're going to come back that was one it was 30 days Mm. of nothing but flies and then they just disappeared yeah that's if flies come with low vibrational spirits too so oh child that was a whole that was Mm. a whole situation that relationship so yeah it was super low Mm -hmm. what's the ruling on shooting them with a salt gun what the uh the flies yeah yeah am i going to hell if i do that like it just goes swinging at me you know like i was desperate anything yeah yep (laughs) but thank you again for listening guys thank you again for your call supporting Uh uh-huh all right, we'll go ahead and move on to our next caller. George, who do we have next? Our next caller is going to be last four digits, 9219. 9219. You'll press star six to unmute. Last four digits, 9219. Going once. 9219. Last four digits. If you aren't able to get in the first time, uh, you can call again and we'll try to get you on the second go around. But we'll go ahead and move on to the next. Next caller is going to be. One sec here, one sec. I just want to make sure. I (laughs) have a twofer. Yeah. (laughs) Our next caller's last four digits are 7878. 7878. 7878. Star six to unmute yourself. 
Last four digits, 7878. Hello. Hello? Yes, hi. Welcome to the Bizarre Junkies call and show. State your name and location oh, if you'd like. Yeah, hi. We can hear you. Hello? Oh, okay. Yes. Um... Am I on live? Yeah, so the live is going to be delayed from, from the call. So you're about 30 seconds ahead of your TV right now. Oh, okay, because I have – I'm actually on two phones, so that's why I was asking. Uh, okay. But, um, hello, um, I want to say hi to Noah. I'm, I, I just love her content. Thank you. Hi, do you mind do you mind muting your TV or turning it down just a little bit just because we're getting the, the echo? No, it's okay. Okay. Hello? Yeah, hi. There we go. Yes. Um I was I was just inquiring that because this actually I wanted to share a dream that I had and if that's okay because I was I didn't get I guess to the live at first, but then I just um wanted to call in to express my dream because it was kind of a weird dream about um my um I guess my guy friend, he passed away, mm-hmm. and I saw him in a dream, and it was the dream was like he he was in my dream because he died of I guess cancer, and I woke up after the dream because I saw his face, but I was choking like really bad, and I was inquiring like what what was that about like the choking situation after I actually sat there. And I had the dream. I'm kind of nervous too, so I'm sorry if I'm not making probably any sense to y'all. That's okay. But no, no, no. That I was understand. just a, that was um that was a kind of weirdy because he just died. He died, and actually he died October the fifth of last year. Okay. And I had to dream about I guess four or five days after he died. Honest. Mm. Mm. Um, uh-huh. can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. So I'm working. sometimes they, they like to visit us, especially after recently passing. Um, I don't know if it startled you or if you were about I'm to fall into the some try sort again later. of sleep paralysis maybe, but it's not uncommon for um, deceased loved ones or friends to visit um, after they are, you know, gone, especially mm-hmm. right after. So it's nothing to be afraid oh, of. Okay. As long as he didn't come off as malevolent, you should be fine. Oh, well, I, I woke up choking, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm such a fan of yours, and I really love your work. Thank you so much. I appreciate so, thank the love. You. Thank, thank you for calling Bye-bye. in. Yes, thank you Bye-bye. for calling in. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to the next caller here. There's still a lot of you in the queue, so just, so just hang tight. Also, uh, we do probably have to give them a, a, a little bit of time, George, just because uh, there is a delay Mm-hmm. from them hearing it on the stream to them realizing oh that's my number yeah yeah definitely and then keep uh keep your speaker open people if you are in the queue um because once i click ask to unmute it'll give you the the prompt to unmute yourself yes all righty we are going to move on to our next caller last four digits are one seven seven three one seven seven three i've admitted you asking you to unmute now Hello. Hello, welcome to the Bizarre Junkies Call-In Show. State your name and location if you'd like. My name is Jay. I'm from Louisiana. Welcome, Jay. Hey, Jay. Hey. Hey, how y'all doing? Good, good. How are you? Um, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I made it in this time. <laughs> hey, we made hey. it. Yeah. Um, I just want to share two quick stories. Um, First of all, I've always had the gift of seeing things, whether good or evil. Some people may call them spirits or whatnot, but I've always had the gift to see things. Mm -hmm. And I've also had dreams that were actually manifest. Mm -hmm. And in the current relationship that I'm in now, it seems like those abilities have height, like they become more clear in the beginning. They used to be like a blur when I was younger. But as I got older, they got more clearer. But since I'm with the person I'm with now, they really, you know, accurate. So one instance, the first instance was, I remember first dating, I was spending the night with her and her apartment was kind of, you know, it had like an eerie kind of vibe to it. I didn't really know what it was. So I just, you know, kind of shook it off. 
Mm-hmm. So one night I was having a dream. And in the dream, it was like a knock on the door. And I actually woke up out the bed in my dream. So I'm trying to walk to the door, but it's like, it's almost like I'm walking on the moon. It's like I'm bouncing to the door real, real slow. Mm -hmm. So I look through the peephole and I just see, um, it looked like a, a lady just shot past the door real fast. And it happened so fast that it made me jump back. And then I heard a woman scream. So I'm like, whoa, whatever that is, mind my business. So I started walking real <laughs> back to the bed. <laughs> and I went back to sleep. So I woke up the next day, you know, everything was normal. Then a few weeks later, when I'm spending the night with her, I fall asleep. And then I was having a dream and it kind of pick up where it left off. I don't really remember what happened, but whatever it was that was bothering me, I was talking and jerking in my sleep. And she woke me up and she was like, what's wrong? And I, you know, told her what happened in the, uh, the previous dream. So we go back to sleep about two o'clock in the morning. There was an actual knock at the door and we both jump up like, oh shit, what's going on? Mm-hmm. So she got spooked, ran to the bathroom and closed the door. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked, <laughs> so I walked to the door. I looked through the peephole. And it's the police. Mm. And at the time, I was on probation. I'm like, uh, you need to come out of this bathroom. A chick was going on at this door. Mm-hmm. So she went, spoke to the police. They called the outside. And they were told that a, her neighbor from upstairs saw somebody trying to break into her car. And they called the police. And that's when, you know, the police arrived and got her and, you know, handled the whole situation. So that was kind of strange. Mm-hmm. Another instance that happened, we were laying in the bed, we're sleeping, you know, and I'm holding her. And then all of a sudden, I just got an uneasy feeling. It's just whatever it was, ain't meet me no good. So I'm just, you know, ignoring it. And I had my back turned to it. Next thing you know, I just felt a, a jerk, a jerk that literally pulled me to the edge of the bed. I'm mm-hmm. like, the hell going on? Mm-hmm. So I grabbed her real tight, and it just started jerking me harder and harder, just pulling me away from her. And I'm clenching her real tight. I start praying. And then eventually I just got exhausted, and I fell asleep. And then when I woke up, the you know, it was the next day, wherever it was, was gone. And I'm like, is something trying to tell me something? Is just something that just blew my mind at the moment? Mm. I've heard of stories of people being jerked out the bed. That's actually really common. Very common. Too common. That's crazy. It was, it was strange. And I'm like, is this something that's trying to, you know, pull me away from her? Or is it something that doesn't want this to work? Or I don't know. It was something that's always been on my mind. Mm-hmm. I would definitely seek divination and see if those are spirit guides or if her apartment, it sounds like somewhere in her apartment, I'm not going to even lie. <laughs> it sounds like oh, yeah, the apartment we, is we, a problem. We, she no longer lives in that apartment, so those, whatever it was, it stayed there. It didn't follow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ashe. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate yes, you Yes, thank you for in. calling in. Thank you for all the support. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a great night. Thank you. You as well. All right, George, we'll move on to the next call. There's still a lot of you in the queue, so just hang tight. Be patient. We'll we'll try to get it to all of you if we can. Our next caller is going to last four digits, 8741. 8741. Star six to unmute yourself. 8741. Last four digits, eight seven four one. Give them a little bit, just yeah. uh, the, the YouTube delay. If you are in the waiting room, make sure that you keep the call open uh, with the speaker on, just so you can hear the ask to unmute prompt. Hello, hello, welcome to the Bizarre Junkies Call In Show. Hi. State your name okay, and location I'm, if you'd it's like. So hard, I'm on like one phone doing this. <laughs> it's okay, um, but. Thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to call in really quick because when I, 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 this is my first time ever on a show, live show. But um, I just have to say, 
I don't know, something's going on with my apartment, but okay, let's just start from the beginning. When I had first moved in to my apartment, I'm from New York City, okay, and when I first moved into my apartment one day, I was just, you know, I was just in the mood to watch a scary movie, so I watched a scary movie, and I fell asleep on my couch, and when I, you know, just, and I'm never scared of movies. I, scary movies don't right. frighten me. Actually, sometimes I laugh at them, which is weird, but yeah. But this particular time when I fell asleep, when I woke up, it was at the the part, the most scariest part of the movie. And for some reason, I just got really frightened. So I just mm-hmm. turned it off. And I was like, this is weird. So I went and took my, so I went, it was maybe about two in the morning. I went, took my shower, got in the bed, but then I'm up a little bit. So I turned my TV on. I was watching it on my laptop, but then I turned my TV on just to, you know, have some background noise while I fall asleep. And I fall asleep, and maybe a half hour later, I wake up, and I'm feeling around my bed for the remote control so I could turn it off. And usually I would put my remote control under my pillow, or it would be right beside me. So I'm feeling all over the bed, don't find it. I get up and I search under the pillows. I, sh- you know, shake the sheets out. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm really shaking the sheets out. And then I just laid them flat and I laid them um, across my pillow. So it's just one big flat, you know, surface covered by a sheet. So, and then I'm looking all over. I'm under my bed. I'm behind the bed. I look on my, I go out, I look on my couch. I look in the kitchen. Nothing there. I walk back towards my bed and my remote control is sitting right in the middle of my pillow Mm -hmm. as if it was just placed there ever so gently. Mm -hmm. And I, the way I froze and looked at, looked at it was like, oh crap. Mm, Right. (laughs) Right. Because you know it wasn't there before. You know, I backed up and I sat on my couch for a good half hour just staring at it. And I was like, okay, what? I said, Ed, what the hell are you going to do? It is 3 o'clock in the morning. Where are you going to go? And I just said, girl, get yourself together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it was something that was going to get you, it would have got you. Mm-hmm. So I just took the remote, put it to the side, got back in bed, fell asleep. But this isn't the first in- the first thing that – this isn't the first instance, you know, in situations that has happened. Um, I had a um, – stapler that just suddenly appeared on top of my work laptop when I get up and go move to the go to the bathroom or something I come back it's sitting right there <laughs> I go to the kitchen to get something I love you know when my meal is on the table I go back come back there's a rubber band or two in my food yeah. but it's so weird it's I mean it's pretty weird and I I'm pretty intuitive to some of these things and I and I feel that I have I have been this way because this is something that runs in my family. But yeah. um, you know, just to I just needed to call in and chime in on this because sometimes you know I do see the shadows, mm-hmm. I do see the orbs. You know, yeah. I do. You know, sometimes I even communicate. It's like, listen, okay, y'all gonna have to chill out. You know, because. Ebony's tired, you know, or, <laughs> you know, not today, guys. I'm not in the mood. And mm-hmm. it's like a playful spirits that are in here. Yeah, that's and what I was going to say. I was say. wondering what your take would be on that. Yeah, definitely either a child or someone who had a really good sense of humor. Not anything malevolent at all. Um, they play too much, actually. <laughs> Stop <laughs> pulling a goddamn remote. Yeah, they do. <laughs> You know, and this is something I did now. I said, okay, I'm a little weary of, sometimes I'm weary of communicating with these spirits. Yeah. But this particular time, I said, you know what, let me ask some questions. So I have the Paratech app on my phone, and I've never used it before. I said, you know what, maybe this is the time. This is the time when the stapler actually showed up on my um, laptop, Mm -hmm. right on top of the keyboard. (laughs) It's like this weird so I just started asking questions and I was getting some, and you know, sometimes you'll get random words and sometimes it's hard to, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's you know, sometimes they're not real. It doesn't really make sense. Right. But mm-hmm. at this, with this instance, stuff started making sense. Okay. It's like, do have you, you know, I, I was asked, I asked a question like, do you have a name 
Are you, you know, um, uh, you know, what, you, just certain questions. And what came through was a woman named Et, Etta, Etta, who, you know, and I asked her, you know, are you, why, you know, why are you here? She said midwife, not with midwife, I'm sorry, um, governess, I apologize. Governess. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> And then the number four, first four came up. Then she said, govern it. Then it said, govern it. I'm like, mm. okay, okay, okay. And then like two, I think it was a boy, uh, Adam, then Adam. And there were some other random words. And it, it was Adam. And then it was another girl's name. But it was like, oh, my goodness. It was just, it was kind of. You know, it, it's like, wow, okay, so you're a governess. And there were some words that just kind of confirmed it. And I was like, wow, okay, okay, this is cool. Okay. But, you know, I never played with it again. But <laughs> what was the name was, of the app? It was, um, it was, was it Parat- Paratech? Um, hold on, let me. I'm gonna definitely check it out one second. Yeah, they're um, asking. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm, I, George, I don't know if you remember. What app did we use on our hunt? I think it was Ghost Tube. There's apps for this. Yeah, so we used in the in the yeah, ghost hunt video. We use it. We don't yeah. use it by itself. You shouldn't use right. the phone app by itself. So we used it with the EMF detector, uh, and that's what we're using as a spirit I'm box. So like, because spirit boxes are pretty it's expensive. I yeah. want it. It's not going to show. Up. But yeah, it's it's called Paratech. That's interesting. P a r a t e k. Paratech. Okay. okay. Yes, and you know I've seen it for I I'm 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 big into paranormal. Mm-hmm. Uh, paranormals, and I see a lot of the investigators use it. So I was like, okay, and it's a, it was a, it's a free app and everything. So I said, okay, let me try let me try this out. And yeah, it's definitely it definitely opened my eyes to some things. Um, but yeah, there's 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 a lot that goes on here, and I'm also, uh, I mean, I could say it does run in my family. My my uncle, he was he definitely saw and communicated with spirits. My grandmother had a gift of sensing death. Mm. If so that makes sense, she knows. She she always said, "I have that deathish feeling." Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, um, and those we, are and very, everybody in the family. It's all it's all like <laughs> epigenetics. For a so we have the yeah. app here on the screen. Uh, so this isn't one that I've used before. Um, the what throws me off a little bit about it is it's a word generator. So that's a little concerning. But um, you know, mm-hmm. I would always recommend if you're going to do a spirit box or especially a phone app, uh, don't do it by yeah. itself. I mean, obviously that's all you have. It's all you have. Um, but I know EMF <laughs> detectors on Amazon are pretty cheap. Um, I would always use that mm-hmm. kind of in conjunction. Uh, in our ghost hunt video, mm-hmm. you can see on on the screen when we were using the spirit box and we were getting answers, we would also be getting spikes on the EMF detector as well. So it mm-hmm. kind of it kind mm-hmm. of crossed cross referenced your data. You're kind of testing yeah. your hypothesis. Yeah, for sure. Um, and just like any any other science, you're kind of taking uh, with multiple forms of data and multiple forms of testing as opposed to just one and letting mm-hmm. that define it. So absolutely. So absolutely. But thank you so much and, for your call, yeah, and, though. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. You have Thank a good you. rest of your night. All right. We'll go ahead and move on you to the too. next caller, George. Thanks. Uh, Our next caller's last three digits are going to be 0987. 0987. Is last four digits. It's not on. We can, if you want to grab it, though, we can turn it on. I wonder if it, I'm just curious if know. it'll. I know. The last time we <laughs> the last time we did uh you did a reading for for our producer Franny and myself yeah, and it was it was going off. off. Yeah. Last four digits zero nine eight seven. Unmute yourself. Star six. <laughs> How hey. you doing? Hello. Welcome hey. to the Bizarre Junkies Call and Show. State your name and location if you'd like. Um, this is Michelle, and I'm calling from Houston. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for calling. Okay. Hey, Noah, uh, you're familiar because I follow you on TikTok. So I'm really excited that I was able to catch you live. I saw you yesterday as well. Oh. But I had like a a story to tell. And because of like your background, I'm hoping that you could tell me if it is my ancestors or not. Um, okay. I grew up like in foster care all my life and I aged out. I pretty much jumped off the porch at 16. I had to do things like to survive. Mm -hmm. And so I got into um, like the strip clubs and stuff like that. And my drink was like roofied. 
Um, oh, and no. I was all the way in Houston. Um, I end up was in this guy's car. I woke up immediately. Like my eyes were clear. I could see the signs. I could see the cars. Like it was like I wasn't even asleep. And I saw a sign and it said Jasper, Texas. And as mm. soon as he saw me, the guy I was in his car, he pulled over to the exit. Something inside of me just knew like I was in trouble. And so I started to try to open up the door and I couldn't. Mm. And so when I was talking to him, he wasn't saying anything to me. We pulled over to the side of the road. He pulled something from the side of the door, but I couldn't I couldn't tell because I was just like petrified. I thought he was, you know, about to kill me. But when he turned around and he looked at me, he screamed like this scream of like he saw people or something with me. And Mm. he told me to get the heck out of his car. And so I jumped out of the car and I ran. And like I just was running and just banging on doors. And and a lady finally opened up the door. Now, this other story as well, because... Like, after these two things, it's like, I feel protected, but I really don't know. You know, um, I was still in the life at the time, and I was with someone, and I was laying down in the bed, and a snake, it it was a dream. It was a snake, like the full length of my body, like the girth of one whole side of my body, and like, I, I jumped up out of my sleep it scared the heck it was like it was Mm -hmm. real even though I knew I was dreaming it just seemed so real like the flesh of the snake like everything about it just seemed like I was it was really happening to me Mm -hmm. but I'm not really sure if it's my ancestors or not or if you have anything like you can suggest that I look Mm -hmm. into um because it's like everything after that I don't want to say paranormal. It's just like I feel more in tune to everything around me, like Mm. everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely um, the incident with the car. I would definitely say that's ancestors. That ain't nothing but spirit. Looking out for them. Yeah, absolutely. Because what are the odds? Um, He gets spooked. She's the one who's supposed to be scared. He got spooked and told her to get out. Um, The snake kind of meaning it depends on what you believe in because in hoodoo snakes are good luck you know they're looked as something like a good omen um but if you believe in other things it could be something else um but i think the main thing was that they wanted you to get out the life and to be safe so yeah the snake didn't like it scared me because it was a snake (laughs) but it wasn't like i was it was just like it was so real like what the heck is this huge snake doing Mm -hmm. beside me Mm -hmm. you know so i don't you know i'm i'm not closed off to any of that you know like uh voodoo or anything i i believe in spirit and everything that come along with it so you know um i just didn't know if i do you think that or have you heard of people like doing past life things or do you think it's like a spiritualist or someone i could reach out to to find out more stuff that's going on with me absolutely because it's not stuff that's making me scared it's just stuff i want to be able out maybe not harness the power but just like to feel to know that i'm safe yes like a reassuring safety yes um if you're looking for like a past life reading like uh regression i know someone that does it so um just email me. My email is in the description of this video and I can pass you the information for sure. Okay. Thank you so much, Noah. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in love. I appreciate your support. Uh, all right. We'll go ahead and move thank on you. to the next caller, George. Who do we have? We next? have three, two, two, three, three, two, two, three. It's going to ask you to unmute star six. Make sure you guys like the video too. Caller, you're hello. Hello, welcome to the Bizarre Junkies Call In Show. State your name and location if you'd like. Hi, my name is Marquetta. I live in outside of Chicago. Welcome. Suburbs. Hi. So I follow I follow the Black Cauldron. I'm a patron too. So oh, I'm wow. one of my patrons. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. your support. <laughs> So uh, when I was growing up, so my mother was schizophrenic. So, so let's start there. 
So uh, she was bipolar schizophrenic. Um, she had a twin sister. They, the twin sister is still alive. My mother deceased. But they're both schizophrenic. They both have psych issues. And they went through, not at the same time, but they would go through um, periods of um, psychosis, you know, in and out. But they would not do it at the same time. So if my mother was going through her depression or sickness, where she wasn't talking or she was catatonic, then my auntie, who was also her twin, was not. She was fine. And then so if my aunt dealt with her psychosis, my mom was fine. So one time we were living at my grandma's house. We were staying, the kids were, we were staying with my grandma and we were kids, like cousins. And it was like three of us. And we were like 10 to 12 years old. And so my auntie was going through a psychosis. So she was like catatonic for like a couple of days now, like, she would like be sitting on a chair, not moving, not talking. She was even like peeing in the chair because she wouldn't get up and go to the bathroom, nothing. Mm-hmm. And so my grandmother, who's like a sanctified Christian at the time, she noticed, you know, that, you know, the behavior. And my grandmother didn't believe in um, psych issues. She just wasn't from that era where she believed in schizophrenia and all that. And she was like, no, that's you know, uh, 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 that's something attached mm-hmm. to her. And so my grandmother got on a prayer line and, and um, called her prayer church friends, and they all had an open, like, three-way line going, and they started praying. And so they decided that my grandmother, who was also, like, disabled, she was in a wheelchair, decided to, you know, pray, get some blessed oil and, like, go over to my auntie, which was in the chair, still sitting there, not moving. But she was looking. She was staring out into space, but she wasn't doing anything else decided to like lay hands on her. And so since it was just my grandma and us three grandkids only in the house, Mm -hmm. my grandma was like, okay, y'all pray. Don't look at her, just pray. And so we started praying, you know, saying, she just said, just say the blood of Jesus. And so she was like, just repeat that. So we were like, okay, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And so my grandmother laid hands on my auntie who still wasn't moving or nothing. And Mm -hmm. She put the blessed oil on her, you know, head and on her um, neck and on her, you know, arm. And so at that time, my auntie started, like, like trying to cough. Like, she was coughing, and then, like, certain sounds was coming out of her mouth. Now, after not moving for, like, a couple days, saying nothing, she once my grandmother put that blessed oil on her, she started, like, uh, uh, like, coughing real deep and then, like, Something was like something was trying to come out of her throat. Her throat got so stiff, like her neck, like her neck and throat was just like like red stick. You could you could see the um, veins like popping out of her neck. Like her neck went back and she just couldn't move. It was so stiff, like something was holding her. And um, she literally, we just kept saying the blood of Jesus. And then like after a few minutes of doing that, and my grandmother praying like hard, and the ladies on the phone was still on the three way praying. The, my auntie came out of it and she just broke down and just started crying. And like, then she was normal after that. Forever? No, not forever, but you oh, know, okay. like, she, I was about she to wanted to take her meds and stuff. Yeah. But like, after that incident, she became, she started talking again. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just so, I, I will always remember that. It, it was just freaked me out as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Laying hands is the most powerful um, form of conjuring you can do trust me mm. trust wow me. so yeah but i appreciate all your That's... support my beautiful patron yeah um i love that <laughs> you're here thank you so much for sharing your story with us i truly thank appreciate you. you okay bye-bye have a good one all right george who is uh next in the queue the next caller is going to have the last four digits of one one five eight one one five eight Star, star six to unmute yourself. Tell us your story. Paranormal, cryptids, UFO, death. Caller. Oh, that caller bounced. Our next caller, last four digits, 2647. 2647. Star six to unmute yourself. Last four digits. Hello, welcome to the Bizarre okay. Junkies Call and Show. State your name and location if you'd like. Hi, I'm Honey. I'm in Garland, Texas. Welcome. And 
then I actually have like a couple of stories here. I often run into all types of freaky stuff like all the time. My friends like always be like, girl, why you always got something going on? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just here. I just exist, <laughs> right? But <laughs> so the first story I have that I can think of, um, let me think. Okay. So with this story, I was actually like really young. I was fairly young. I was like around like four, five around that area. And around this time I stayed in a like fairly small house with my with my parents, with my sisters. My parents were all out often though, because they both worked. So my aunt was babysitting us at the time. So it was me and my three sisters, right? So how our room at the time was set up because we all shared a room. It was set up in a way like we had like two bedrooms and of um, two beds, excuse me, two beds in the bedroom. And we had a bed against the wall and against uh, like above that bed was a window. And then we had a bed across from that. And then like towards like the foot of the bed, like towards like the fall, the far end of the room, we had a door you can go in and go out of. And then we kind of like against the same wall as the doors, like kind of like that, right? But there's this one time we were um, all staying up all night. We were being bad, like you know what kids do, staying up talking. Right. Um, we were we all like had our <laughs> we all had our heads to the um, wall. And we had our feet off, like kind of like the not like the foot of the bed, but kind of like the edge of the bed, right? So we were sitting in a way so all four of us can sit in the bed. And we were all sitting, we were all talking, chopping it up. And all of a sudden, there was a pause. We all just stopped. And we were all staring at that window because outside that window, there was like this black silhouette with red eyes. And me, like, I remember, like, apparently, like, me and my <sighs> other little sister are the only people who remember this. The other two don't remember this, even though it's my twin and my babysitter sister. We all experienced it because I remember, like, we were all staring at that black silhouette mm -hmm. with red eyes. And one of us asked, hey, is this a dream? And I go, this can't be a dream because we all see it. And just as I say that, it like speeds, like it look, like it's like it, it makes no sense at the time. We we don't even understand it because we're kids. We're kids. We're just looking at it. So it looks like it like because the windows closed. It's green over the windows for like bugs and everything. It's the country, but it like crawls and through the window and it lands on a bed. So we're over here just watching. But we all like brace. Like there's there's like a tense. Like we're getting ready to book it right, and we pause and. It gets off the bed and it sits up and it starts walking towards me, specifically towards me. Like it makes a straight line towards me and it stands over me and looms over me and it just like goes and it touches my face. Like it tries to touch my face, but his hand just like stops and goes because at that time we all scream and we just fall over each other trying to get out of bed, run out the door. And we all just run to my aunt. We're like, hey, Sam, hey, Sam, there's something in our room. There's something in our room. And she's like, what? And so she 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 goes in our purse and pulls out a, like I don't, it's a pearl shooter right, mm -hmm. and she goes to our room. We turn on the light and it's gone. There's nothing there. <laughs> wow. And like we don't, like to this day, I don't know what it is. I tell my friends the story. No one, none of us can piece it together what it is. I told my cousin the story. He was like, "Did it have a smell? It could be a D word." And I was like, "It didn't have a smell. I don't remember it having a smell, but it just like it was just off putting. Like it wasn't supposed to be there." Mm. Of course, it's not supposed to be there. <laughs> right. You said like, it smelled. <laughs> would it smell like sulfur? It didn't have a smell at all. Oh, I thought you like, said it did it was smell. Just, like my cousin, I remember like my oldest cousin asked me if it had a smell. Like he mm -hmm. asked, because like I told him about it. I, he asked me if it had a smell, but I told him I don't remember it having a particular smell. It didn't really have anything that stuck out with besides just like a dark silhouette humanoid feature, um, creature with red eyes. Mm. You know, it's so funny. My kids seen that too. Uh, you yeah. say your kids it's, have seen that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's no. a common low vibrational spirit. Trust me, you are not the oh. first person I've heard say that they've seen the red eye silhouette. Ooh, my bad, John. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you're not the first person that said they've seen that. It's almost like the hat guy. The, the hat, hat man, guy. yeah. You take enough Benadryl, you'll see him. Yeah, that's what I heard. I said, oh, well. I had a friend who was like, I'm going to try to see him tonight. I'm going to take 13 bed. Oh, I was like, please don't oh do my that. God, please don't do that. <laughs> yes. Well, I appreciate your support and yes, you calling. Thank you for thank the you call. So much. Before we get to this thank next caller, so George, I want to talk. Uh, take a minute to talk about our sponsor, 
for today's show, which is puffy slippers. Which is, <laughs> have you seen these? Have I showed you these yet? You can text me him. Okay, so these are uh, these are some cool puffy slippers. Uh, we have a deal right now with puffy slippers. These are not the only ones, of course. Uh, they actually have <laughs> fashionable ones. These ones are just I feel like fit the vibe the most. Yeah. yeah. Um, but right now, if you go to puffyslippers.com and you use code Bizarre, you can get fifteen percent <laughs> off your entire order. Uh, I just want to give a huge shout out to them because uh, the owner, Kyla, is a, a really good friend of the show, a really good friend of the studio, and um, we're really happy to uh, be working with her. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk about these. I know George is pulling up here in a sec for anybody who is uh, Puffy curious. Puffyslippers.com? Yeah, it's P-U-F-F-I-E slippers.com. You, know, you got to get the branding. But these are uh, they're actually really comfy. I have another no, pair. I was about to say, yeah, they look like you walk on clouds. <laughs> yeah, so I have another pair. And you, do you guys remember the moon moon shoes? That's what it yes. feels like walking oh, in those. Okay. Moon shoes, so yeah. these are some of them right here. Uh, we have, yeah, those ones. You can see the ones I'm holding in my hand oh, right okay. there. There's a bunch of different ones. There's a bunch of cool designs. She's actually, uh, she was here yesterday and she showed me some, uh, some ones she's planning to put out. But yeah, right now, PuffySlippers.com. Use code Bizarre, B-I-Z-A-R-R-E. Um, I think I spelled that right. Yeah, B-I-Z-A-R-R-E. <laughs> and you'll cheesy. get 15% off your entire order. But uh, all right, let's go ahead and... Uh, Move on to the next caller here. Uh, we have about 30 minutes left uh, before we have to call it a night, but this will be on. Uh, we'll be doing this every Friday at 6 p.m. So this week was a little earlier just because of the scheduling, but um, every Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, we'll, we will be taking your calls. So uh, let's see. Who is the next one, Mr. George? The next caller is going to be 7090, last four digits. Seven zero nine zero. Seven zero nine zero. Oh, oh, nope. dropped up. Okay. Uh, next caller is going to be nine five seven zero. Nine five seven zero. Star six to unmute yourself. Yep, star six to unmute, and you should be able to nine tell us your five story. Seven zero. We got to give them a sec too, because there is a delay. Nine five seven zero. Make sure you guys like the video too. And like I have in this graphic here, if you like the Black Cauldron, you'll love the Bizarre Junkies channel. Yes. So make sure you head over there and subscribe. So that that way you don't ever miss any spooky content. Yes, correct, yes, yes. correct. Please. Even my subscribers here. This is my guy right here. Yeah, we, we text all the time. I'm not yes. even kidding. We text not even like about like, like spooky stuff. We'll no, just... I'm like, dude, my video, it's not doing yeah, you're well. Like, you're like, it's not doing well. <laughs> uh, all right, so we have our next caller. Hello, welcome to the Bizarre Junkies Call and Show. State your name and location if you would like. Hello. Hello. Yes, we Hi. can hear you. Yo. Yo. Yo, yo, yo. Can you hear us? I can hear George on the other side. You could uh, mute your TV for us, please. Yep. Go ahead and mute your TV. You can hear us through the phone, so you don't have to listen to both. Yo, yo, yo. Hello. Welcome. Yo, yo, yo. Yo. Yo, yo. Yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I'm like, dude. You yeah, know. All right. So all right, we'll move on to the next executioner one. Executioner George came out, all right? Oh so God, we're not gonna man. we're not gonna be playing around like that. I know you heard us. Uh thanks for calling though. So who's the next thanks caller? For calling. Next caller is seven zero nine zero. Seven zero nine zero. Seven zero nine zero. Star six to unmute yourself. I feel like we're always gonna have the one, you know. It's okay. It's it's live. We're, gonna have we're live. The, we're gonna have the one. We're gonna know? have the one. It's okay. Listen. Hello, welcome to the Bizarre Junkies Call In Show. State your name and location if you'd like. Hi, my name is Kayla, and I'm from Florida. Hi, Kaylin. Welcome to the show. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Good. How, How are, are you? you? Doing well. So I just had a little quick story about a situation that took place a few years back with um, one of my older cousins and I. Um, so similar to one of the stories I heard tonight, I have a home that's been in my family for over about 50 or 60 years or so. 
Um, coming up, I did hear stories about different relatives that had passed away. Um, but in 2011, my great grandfather actually passed away in the home um, to a brain aneurysm. And um, he had actually been in there by himself for about maybe two or three days before anyone found him. Um, wow. Fast forward to about, uh, I said 2015, 2016. Um, one of my older cousins and I were living there in the home. And I was getting ready for work. It was about 7.30 in the morning. Not to mention, I was staying in the room that my grandfather passed away in. Um, so my cousin was going to drive me to work because I didn't have a driver's license at this time. So um, he was, you know, stretching, rubbing his eyes and getting ready to brush his teeth and everything so that he could drive me to work. And um, when... He got ready to drive me to work. I remember like putting on my last uh, body oils, lotion, and perfume before I walk out. And I sat down on the bed to put on my socks. We were sitting side by side. He was putting on his shoes and his socks. And then all of a sudden, we both heard, help, in like a small faint tone. Now, we were the only two here at the home. And so when we heard help, we're like, we look at each other and we just sat there for about five minutes just looking at each other. And then we kind of just uttered the words like, did you hear that? <laughs> and um, so, you know, when we both confirmed that we heard what we heard, we kind of just were shocked. So we went to my great grandmother, who was still living at the time, and we were telling her. And that's where the story came out about how he passed away into the home. So I never understood where, whether that was any correlation to what he had experienced in his last moment or exactly what that was about. But my cousin and I are one hundred percent sure what we heard, and it, it, it was just crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is crazy because y'all ain't deaf. Y'all understand. You heard it, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but thank you for, so much for yeah. all your support. I appreciate you calling in. Thank you, guys, as well. Have a good night. Thank you, you as well. So, George, I think we have time for one more caller. Um, for everybody who's listening, um, uh, we you know we kind of have a time limit here, so. Be sure to call in on the next one. We'll definitely try to get through everybody. Um, it will be a later time next week. It'll be at 6 p.m. instead of 4. So it'll be a little later in the day, and that's Pacific Standard Time, of course. Uh, I've had people reach out all day, and they're like, are you live yet? And I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. no, not they yet, not yet. It. So, uh, George, who's going to be our last caller for today? Our last caller? Ooh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to let you guys see what I'm dealing with back here. I yeah, get we've... to choose. I've been, I've been picking. I, there's some people that go to the top. Sometimes I go to the bottom. This time I'm going to go to the middle, 9013, 9013. Sure, we'll definitely try to... Hello? It will be a later time next week. Hello? Yes, hello. Welcome to the Bizarre Junkies call-in show. State your name and location if you'd like. Hi, I'm Jay. I live in Philadelphia. Hi, Jay. Welcome Hi, to the Jay. show. So I, I just had this crazy story that um, I would love your opinion on. Okay. Mm. So me and my girlfriend, we laying down. I'm asleep. I'm, going, I'm, I'm always asleep, though, to be honest. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm asleep, and I start dreaming, right? So... I do love Golden Girls. I just want to say that. That's my TV show. And Frasier. So mm -hmm. now I live in a, I work in a city. So there's no houses around where I work at. So in my dreams, I'm like rushing because I'm always late to come to. I'm <laughs> rushing to work. So for some reason in my dream, I was being led to like a basement. And I'm like, there's no like a house basement. I'm like, there ain't no houses, you know, down mm -hmm. here. So I, I went, but half of me like, was like, don't go down the steps. It's too dark in that basement, which it wasn't. So I ended up going down the steps. But when I got to the bottom of the steps, like I said, it wasn't dark. But I was feeling like it was dark for some odd reason. So I ended up turning around and going back up the steps because something spooked me. Mm -hmm. But by the time I got to the middle of the steps, it's like something just felt like it just like jumped in, in me and started like, like electric feeling like electric shock because my girlfriend ended up waking me up like yo what's wrong with you i'm like i don't even know what the hell that was mm. Mm, mm, mm. so yeah so i would love to have your opinion on that interesting well i feel like um if you are well first of all which what did you eat and what were you watching before you went to sleep i think honestly i think i was watching fraser Okay. That that um 
when I went to sleep that night. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to rule that out. Um, I don't think, I think sometimes we just have nightmares and they don't really have any meaning or a lot of times we're about to fall into sleep paralysis and either lucid dream or astral dream. Mm. Um, so I think that's kind of what goes on. And right before you go and do that, Oh, sorry. Y'all I'll be just back here. Like I'm a CEO leaning back. <laughs> um, but right before you do that, sometimes we experience the most scariest shit. I know I have. So a lot of the times we think it'd be like some low vibrational shit and really it'd just be that you're either mm -hmm. about to do sleep paralysis, which can turn into astral projection or lucid dreaming. Okay. All right. So don't worry. All right. <laughs> don't worry. Okay. <laughs> We've all been Thank here. Thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate you but, calling um, in the support. I want to take no more time, y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a great night. And thank you again. Thank, Thank you. you for calling. George, I think we have time for one more. I think we can squeeze one more in uh, before we got to wrap here at six. So I'll let you I'll let you make the the uh, the tough decision on who the last for real last one is. I'm just picking my favorite numbers. I like <laughs> sevens and twos. So our last callers last four numbers are seven, two, 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 seven, two, two, two. Star six to unmute yourself. Seven two two two. Hello, welcome to the Bizarre Junkies Call In Show. State your name and location if you'd like. Hi, Sheila from Atlanta. Hello, welcome hey, to the show. Hey, hey Noah. Hi, hi, everyone else. How you guys doing? <laughs> hey, love. Hey, sorry, I got a I got a head cold, so I sound kind of funny. So I apologize. Uh, I'll be quick. Um, about 15 years ago, I'm sitting on my bed. The next thing you know, it's just me in my room sitting on my bed, and I feel something sit next to me. Mm -hmm. Actually feel something sitting next to me. Okay, didn't freak out. It happened again. Maybe about a couple of weeks later, it happened again. Okay, next story. A friend of mine um he has emotional problems. He's uh, suicidal. He's always telling me how he wanted. To, he wants to do this. He wants to do that to himself. Okay. Usually after um, our session, I would uh, uh, brush it off, uh, detox from that conversation because I know about energy. Mm -hmm. That one time I did not detox. Um, I'm on dialysis, by the way. Um, when I went to dialysis the very next day, I did not want to get out of my car. I was feeling suicidal, crying mm -hmm. in my car the whole nine. Mm -hmm. um, I called into the clinic, told the nurse, look, I don't feel right. I feel like I want to end my life. She came out, prayed over me. Um, I went inside, and uh, within an hour, I felt better, but I did not know why I felt that way. I did not know why this energy had came over me. And then I realized, okay, that's because I didn't detox from what he told me. Last story, um, over the years, I'm doing 20 years of dialysis. Anyone listening to you guys, the sound of my voice, please take care of yourself. Um, I've been dealing with dialysis for 20 years because of strep throat, <clears throat> not uh uh, high blood pressure or diabetes. It was strep throat that messed up my kidneys. Okay, wow. moving on. 20 years of dealing with this. The last three years of uh, <sighs> my have just declined. Um, I've been feeling just mentally gone. Mm -hmm. um, when I say gone, now I'm to the point where I'm clinically depressed. I've dealt with so many deaths dealing with friends from dialysis just die. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so I've been seeing shadow figures, shadow people. Um, when I was really, really at my lowest, like I was, like I wanted to kill myself. And then they were at a distance. Like I would say, okay, if I'm in the living room, I would see something in the kitchen, you know, mm -hmm. something yeah. like that, the corner of my eye. 
or like if I'm at dialysis, they were uh, over by the nurse's station. And then the next thing you know, it was getting closer. So this time it wasn't by the nurse's station or in the kitchen. It was closer, like Mm -hmm. on the steps. Um, Then the next thing you know, I'm in my room. And lights are off, the TV's going, and I see something in the corner. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, all right. But you know what the funny thing, Noah? I wasn't scared. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like, oh, shit, I need to run up out of here or mm-hmm. anything like I was content. I was composed. I was like, yo, if this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Had my DMX voice on. I was like, <laughs> okay, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and I was okay with that. And um, I don't know when it left or when I stopped seeing it, but I know it, it. that feeling has come back now that my health is at a decline. Um, and especially spiritually, I'm not religious, but you know, um, you know, I'm spiritual, and you know, I don't, I don't do the Jim Jones Church. For all those who are older know about that. I don't mm-hmm. sit the Kool Aid, yeah. but I know, I know what's out there. I know about energy. I know about the vibration, and I know that my base, my vibration is so low because of my health, but. Um, that's a story I wanted to tell, nothing really spooky or anything like that. But for those who are listening and for you guys as well, please take care of your health. You know, this is not something I, I brought this upon myself, but it's, it happens and y'all take care of yourself. Happy new year. I love your show. Um, and just thank you for just hearing my story and y'all take care of yourself. If someone tells you crazy, like someone tells you, no, not crazy. If someone tells you something, especially dealing with uh, suicide or anything like that, try to detox. Try to, yeah. if you pray, pray it off or whatever mm-hmm. you got to do. For and sure. cause these things jump. And especially mm-hmm. I wasn't in a right frame of mind um, yes. to hear it and let it go at that time. And it jumped on me. And, um, and these things are real. But yeah. thank you, guys. For thank you for calling. Show. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. You as well. Well, what a what a show that was. Uh, I feel like you need to extend it. I, I would if, yeah. if we no, didn't no, have no, somebody I mean, coming in, in right future. after. Yeah, in the future. perhaps so. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I want to say thank you to everybody who uh, made this a pretty cool first show. I yes. mean, um, this That's is awesome. this is pretty cool. I think this is something we're gonna keep doing going forward. Yeah, and even like I am streaming on TikTok as well. And they're like, oh, how long have they been doing this? And I'm like, ah, this is the first show. This is not, it's not even my show, but, you know, this is, it turned out pretty good. It was, this was a good time. George, have we, I don't think, I mean, we've had a show last year that was, that did something like this, but it was a part of the show, but this is the whole show is. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's here to stay. It's here to stay. I love, yeah. Just like how you guys are saying, I love how people were calling in saying like first time caller. It's like everyone is. Yeah, (laughs) We're all newbies here. We, none of us, well, you know what you're doing, George, you're pretty good in tech. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, but the love and the numbers, I mean, this is going to continue. So just make sure you subscribe to both channels. Yes, absolutely. Cause both, both of us are putting out content quite, quite uh, consistently. And it's, I would say you can scratch both itches with that. With you, you get more yeah. of the spiritual side. With me, you get more of the paranormal. Yeah, Bigfoot. More of the, yeah, uh, Bigfoot. Aliens. As speaking of, they were asking you. Um, About the Miami aliens? Yes. They so we, were we in- just did a whole episode on that. Um, it's it's interesting because there's a lot of conflicting reports. I mean, there's, mm. there's no real footage mm. proving either way, though. That's the thing, though. <laughs> There's no right. footage. I, George and I went to, went to school together. We know fights. Like, yeah. we, they're, everybody's filming that. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that they're like, oh, there was a big fight. Okay, well, I mean, then we should have some footage some of it. Some of it. Um, I definitely think that it's too many people um, that seen it with their own two eyes. And then when you a go lot to, of the same story too. Yes, a lot of the same story. Mm-hmm. And I when they go that. to record it, it looks like it was recorded on a two thousand Nokia phone, where it's really like just pixelated. I totally believe everybody. I'm saying it right now that there were aliens. 
at the mall shopping in Miami. Yeah. For those who haven't seen it, we did a reaction show that came out this week yes. talking and the whole topic was about that episode and, uh, Yep. Franny, our producer, and I were, were looking at it, and there was a guy who did a whole diagram showing how he saw a foot come out of this portal yeah. and a hand, and it was it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Aliens are just spiritual creatures. That's what I've been hearing a lot more of they is they're, they're interdimensional. Yeah. They're, it's it's a lot of that. So it's definitely an interesting theory because a lot of them, granted, I, I do think it's it's crazy to think that we're the only life form in the mm. universe. Like I feel like that's ignorant yes. to say, but also the fact that interdimensional, like yeah. There's got to be a lot of truth to it with like paranormal and, yeah. you know, people Listen, sensing things and stuff like that. And the government has given us an ego that is far beyond what we even had the audacity to have. This is not something that surprised me. And we're going to see more of it. Trust me. Yeah, I feel like uh, a lot of a lot of stuff's going to come to light now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it started with that. George and I were here for that seven in the morning with that, that, U, that UAP uh, mm-hmm. conference that they had. That was crazy. Just yeah. hearing them pretty much in front of a massive group say yeah we we know about these things and it's like oh it's like all right we've been new we've yeah, been new, right bro. but now but now it's the fact that they're admitting, <laughs> admitting to it, it yeah right? you're like all right well now they know so now we know mm-hmm. but uh what do you got going on where can the people who aren't already following you where can they find you they can find me on of course youtube um instagram and facebook those are my struggle platforms we, we had a conversation we, about we need that. to get you going especially facebook and instagram yes the amount of content you have waiting for you to just hit accept mm-hmm. and then you have posts yeah. from us on instagram is it's yeah. probably a lot yes so of course there TikTok, um patreon i do teach spirituality hoodoo um african traditional religions no i'm not initiated but i will be but what i do know i teach on there um, so there's a bunch of ways to get in contact with me. Tremendous. George, what about you? What, what's, uh, what's in new in the world of gridiron junkies? Anything, anything going on? I know you're in the playoffs. NFL but... playoffs coming up <laughs> and there's going to be some spiritual stuff going on there. Uh, mm-hmm. cold weather, uh, <laughs> yeah. 65 mile an hour gust. I don't think. Is that uh, Kansas city? Is that the, the Kansas city game? That... No, that's going to be the bills. It's going to be like uh, negative 10 degrees. Oh, Oh, yeah. Brick hands. Go Steelers. Yep. (laughs) I'm I'm with you. It's going to be. All I know know is my ancestors have not been doing well with my team and my fantasy (laughs) team. Okay. I already asked um, Manny. I'm like, do you want me to just light a candle or do some (laughs) spell work for the Steelers this season? You still want me to do that? (laughs) Yeah. They're going to be. (laughs) They're going to be brick hands the entire time (laughs) trying to catch stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just going to bounce off their hands. Yeah, no, I don't know how yeah. they would even do that. So, but you can hear more of stuff like that at Gridiron Junkies on all mm-hmm. platforms. And uh, for everybody still watching, we have content coming out three times a week now. So now we have our regular show where we interview or discuss a specific topic. We have our reaction show, which you have been on. So if people mm-hmm. want to see that, they can see that episode. And now we have the call in show, which will be every Friday at 6 p.m., okay. which is, uh, I think this is. Uh, Lightning in a bottle right now, I think. Okay. I think it's uh, something that's going to be good. Listen, we're growing and blowing in 2024, period. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. George, I think that's all we're doing, right? That's all we're doing. All we're doing. So uh, thank you so much to everybody who watched. Check out all the links down below in both videos. Uh, We've definitely got stuff for you to check out. Uh, And until next time, everybody, stay bizarre.